Welcome everyone to the to the Canyons News Podcast. My name is Xander Grable and today I'm joined with Nadek Chakhadian and Christopher Casey. And today we're going to be talking about the entertainment industry as a whole and like the status that it's in right now. So Chris, you want to start us off? Yeah, I think I'll start it off. So I found that on, I think, The Verge. And it was it was on a Twitter post or X or whatever people call it now. And apparently Hulu is getting bought out by Disney for $8.6 billion. And I don't know how y'all think about it, but I think the platform is dead. Like, I think they're really only known for The Rookie, which is a cop show. I love the show. And when they used to have Family Guy when they got it from Netflix. But um, what do you think? Uh, yeah, like uh, like we said before, I, I mean, I think that Hulu was much better, and now they're literally just relying on Hulu as live sports, mm-hmm. which, um, I mean, you were talking about Hulu as live sports, right? What were you going to say? Yeah, I, I watch Red Zone on mm, Hulu, yeah. so if you guys don't know what that is, Red Zone is commercial-free. I think it's like eight hours of just football on Sundays. Mm-hmm. It's back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. It's just all the highlights and everything that's going on live. Um, I mean, football is something that is going to keep TV around for however long they can keep (laughs) TV around. Like, Mm -hmm. people are going to always pay every single year for whatever has Red Zone, I think. Which was YouTube. YouTube TV got uh, Red Zone and um, Sunday Ticket. And, I mean, I don't know the numbers, but I'm sure they exploded after. I'm sure. I'm not not a big, like football or sports fan because i don't understand it like mm-hmm. tell me anything about like i don't know, the cowboys and chargers that one game i cannot tell you anything about it but you know i think football is, is like a like the big thing for tv yeah and so i don't think i think it'll be able to last with football and um the one thing that you did say xander yeah red zone red zone all right so let's take like a little bit of a turn let's talk about marvel recent mm-hmm. news about marvel um, Chris, did you read anything about that? So, obviously, I do read stuff about Marvel because I'm biased because my dad worked with Marvel and all that. But the one thing I found recently was with uh, Jonathan Majors. Um, I don't remember what was the character name. What was it again? Uh, it was Kang the Conqueror. He's like Kang a new the phase Thanos, basically. He's the new villain of the era. It's a new Thanos? Yeah. Well, he's not Thanos, but, like, you know, he's like the new main villain for that phase okay yeah but apparently as of a uh, couple phase four it's phase four <laughs> phase four into camera no no, no i'm no, saying no. it's phase four that's what the marvel oh uh, sorry sorry is. i didn't hear but you yeah, know basically that um he has abuse allegations uh, towards him and then now marvel's wanting just to immediately switch him to doom that one uh old character dr doom yeah dr doom yeah but i think Obviously, what is going on right now just sucks. Like, I don't, I just hope that whatever is happening, the people are okay. But no, I just, I don't even have really any thoughts about it. It's just crazy. Hmm. I think Marvel is taking a weird turn right now because what I've seen is that they're, they're killing off these characters because they're having to pay them so much money and they're trying to replace them. Like, they're trying to make new Avengers. Like new characters for the Avengers, like with Captain America with Anthony Mackie, and they're also trying to be diverse. So they have an African American Captain America who's cheaper to pay than Chris Evans. Um, they killed off Iron Man. I, I mean, it's just they're trying. They're they're. It's a power hungry or a money hungry uh, company. Yeah, I mean, I I think that diversity is not the issue because a lot of people are blaming diversity it's mm-hmm. the fact that they're taking characters that already exist disney is doing this they're doing <clears> this with <throat> disney with marvel i don't know if they're doing it with star wars specifically but they're taking characters that already exist and they're putting like a different actor that is a completely different version but the same character it makes no mm-hmm. sense to me yeah i don't know that's to me that's the whole diversity issue you can make these characters and everybody will be happy if you make a new character same actor new character yeah yeah exactly like i think it is cool that companies are wanting to like have characters that identify with other groups like for example like you know yeah like black people white people uh mexican filipino but it doesn't make sense if you're changing the actor because that kind of changes up the story a little bit but if you make a character that aligns with those values and cultural stuff then I think that would make a really good character, like a good addition to something. That's what I'm saying. I mean, look, the simplest way I think I could put this, I'm Armenian, 
if Captain America were to be Armenian, I would be fuming. I'm all for diversity. I love diversity. Do not take... I mean, not that there's anything wrong with, let's say, a black Captain America. That's great. Cool. Yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying is that I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like made an Armenian Captain America at this point. I would not be surprised. One yeah. bit. Yeah. So I think they're trying to play towards an audience and being diverse, but they're they're covering it up as being diverse, yeah. but they just don't want to pay Oh yeah, that's the, the actors like what they they price themselves out of Disney. That's all it was. That's how I think about yeah. it. Yeah, and also going along with like actors and all that. Like from in when I was watching Infinity War, because uh, I think I don't know how we got in, but I think like Marvel or something, or my dad got in by and we watched a premiere for it. Mm. But even in the background, I can tell like like the VFX for that was amazing. But they like scanned background characters with ai and like put them in the background which i think is honestly disrespectful to those actors because like they're trying to make a living and they're basically just firing them and using their face for whatever they yeah. want to use yeah. that's a whole nother thing like ai taking over the jobs of actors i'm an actor myself and you know ai can't do things that real life actors could do I, that's my that's my opinion i don't know if you guys feel the same way about that definitely. but definitely like i said disney they're just trying to cut corners because they're money hungry company so they're just gonna use ai technology when they don't have to pay background actors for i mean we we saw what ai did to the whole strikes we saw how that affected it i mean give the people what they deserve give them the money that they deserve mm -hmm. stop stop the stop making people like not get paid pretty much for something that they deserve to be paid for that's how i think about it exactly and for example like is Xander, he got a show with uh, NBC, right? Yeah. Like, for example, let's say that you, like, since you your character got killed off, what it what would happen if, like, NBC just, like, scanned your face and they, like, put you, put, they resurrected be, you back? I would be pretty pissed if they did that because, you know, I built that character. That's my character that I, yeah. that I did, put acting techniques into that character. Now they're just not even using my opinion on it and just making it however they want to and it, I, that's a whole nother thing actors put their time and effort into making a character and as an actor we don't feel respected like that that's why the actor strike is going on like they yeah. want to use ai for i mean there's another actors. thing like them using your face when you're not getting paid yeah. for your face yeah. is pretty ridiculous yeah. to me yeah it's just like it's as i said it was it's disrespectful like yeah. people are trying to make a livelihood out of it that's why actors are still striking thank god that the writers now have protections from ai because obviously one thing is that you can't copyright ai material work yeah but it doesn't mean that people can try to find loopholes and that's why i feel like actors are still on strike because i feel like the studios will try to still find loopholes for that stuff it's unethical yeah I mean, really yeah i mean Hopefully the the actor strike ends soon. I know they started talks. I'm pretty sure they started talks like a couple of days ago. Yeah, because um, one event that happened was that I think the actors did a deal that was kind of lower than what they were even asking for, and the studios just walked off. They walked from the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I read something the other day where it was like millionaire actors or like oh yeah this can go on forever and ever it's like we want we know what we want but i'm here you know barely making enough money to survive as an actor and i'm like okay i need to go back to work soon so i can make money to live and so they they can be on the strike forever because they have millions of dollars to yeah. lean back on and everything i'm pretty sure it was um the guy that plays the mandalorian I think that was it. Who, who was that actor again? I didn't watch oh, the Mandalorian. Was it, was it Pedro Pascal? Pedro Pascal. That's yeah, what yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Because I didn't. I didn't watch the Mandalorian or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm. I'm gonna be honest. I haven't watched Star Wars in a while. I think it was the Force Awakens was the last one I watched. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I haven't watched it in a while. I honestly didn't know. But I think it's really cool that like big actors like uh, the main person from Breaking Bad. He's showing his support, even if no matter how much he's getting paid, he's showing that we should stand with all the actors, make sure that they don't do the stupid AI stuff and all that. Yeah, Brian Cranston. That's who. That's who it was. I love Brian Cranston because he's he's someone that knows the struggle of being an actor, barely making enough money. Because he was he didn't get Breaking Bad until he was I don't know how old he was, but you know he had that whole life in front of him or after him, and then he got Breaking Bad, so he like had to work to that point. 
I mean, he was skills. he was successful before Breaking Bad for sure. Mm -hmm. But still, I mean, Brian Cranston has always struck me as a very like, uh, how do you put it, like hardworking actor in comparison to like. Yeah. But the the other point you were making though that um, like these millionaire actors are saying, oh, it's okay. People also don't realize how many good shows we got robbed of because they had to cancel because of the writer strike or actor strike. Like there have been, there's a whole list of shows. I'm not too familiar, but I know Winning Time with Max. I don't know if you guys know about that one. What was that one about? It was the Lakers show. It was. Oh, I remember. Seeing, I remember seeing something from that. Yeah. It was not pulling the ratings for the second season because they weren't advertising correctly. I think, mm -hmm. or people were saying it deserves more, and Max, the whole app thing happened. Whatever happened, but for them to cancel a show that. I think the very first episode is like eight years in the future or 10 years in the future and they didn't get there by the end of season two you can tell the show isn't finished this is like i think it's a whole mess they just basically slap it together is what you're trying to say sorry they're just trying to like slap it together like what they have no they just canceled say? it after season two like it oh. was probably supposed to go until season four and like the story is i didn't watch season two yet i want to watch it but you from what i heard you can tell the story is not finished I don't, I don't doubt that that's probably what happened. I'm not really into those shows, but there's this one animation show that I used to watch called Inside Job. It was about mm -hmm. conspiracy theories and like the world government and all that. It only ran for one season. There was so much like audience appeal. They loved the show. They wanted to see a second season, and they got like maybe one, like one episode. They and Netflix cut it. Wow. I don't know if it was because of the writers, because the writers were amazing in the show. They actually made really funny jokes. They made it flow well, but I don't get why cancel a show that's amazing and actually has appeal to people and that will watch it for a lifetime. Mm. And just like, nope, you're gone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. That one of the shows that I watched that got canceled was um, Space Force. I don't know if you, it's on Netflix. And have you guys heard of it? Have you heard of it? Space Force. Yeah. Uh, that animation show, right? No, it's not an animated show. It's live action, but it's um. Who's the guy? The guy that plays Michael Scott in The Office. Michael Scott. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I've watched. He's like, he's like a five-star general that starts Space Force, and oh, it's, it's oh like I know goofy, what you're talking about. I know what you're talking it's about. It's like a really goofy show, and it yeah, got yeah, canceled yeah. after the second season, I think. But they had, they had like so much content build up because at the season finale they land on the moon, <laughs> then like the Chinese come and attack them or something, and like, <laughs> so they already had that arc like built up and everything, and it's just it's gone to waste now because yeah you know, the. The writer strike, the actor strike, and everything, so they had to cancel it. And the ratings were kind of bad too. But personally, I liked I liked the show. I enjoyed it. Well, I think well, India went into the moon recently, so why not just add India to that mix? Yeah. But the <laughs> Americans with the Chinese and the Indians, they all they all fight and all that. Yeah. But I think overall, I just want to say that with um, the industry as a whole, I think that there's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. And while there is stuff that is being fixed now there's still a lot of underlying issues that hasn't been really i guess in a way um like that but for example like for example with movies and tv like what i think is that what what is like i'm sorry if i'm like blanking out but like what is harder to make a movie or a, like a like a season on tv i think season of tv that i mean the thing is that i'm a much bigger fan of tv than i am of movies i think that tv done correctly is the best because you get to watch way more than two hours you get to connect so to make a great a really great season of tv might not be as difficult as making a great movie but making a good t season of tv is definitely i think harder i agree i agree i think you have to have a lot of good ideas to make a good tv show yeah. like a season of a tv show um, there's definitely those shows that have the awful seasons and then they have like oh, yeah. a really good season and I feel like you have to have those episodes in between to, ha to have a good couple episodes. You have to have yeah. those ones that intertwine together to make up a good episode where viewers understand what's happening, things like that. Like a slow start to a season doesn't mean that that season's going to be bad, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, because like, aren't like seasons now like 10 episodes when they yeah. used to be like 15, 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, for example, The Rookie that I watch... Um, is like 20 episodes a season one of them had like 14 but they actually make it flow way better with the amount of episodes that they can do on it uh, i think i think something else to like note is that if you were to take what's considered i mean what do you guys what have you guys heard about uh like the best movie of all time i've heard probably between godfather and like i don't know 
Godfather. Shawshank Redemption, right? Yeah. And then like, I mean, if mm. you you could, just just general consensus. I think I think I have to agree with uh, the Godfather. And then if you were to take the best TV show of all time, I think it's up there for me. It's not my number one, but Breaking Bad. Is I was about to say, right? yeah, Breaking Bad. And so if you were to compare Breaking Bad and Godfather, you're talking about two hours versus what, like. 60 hours hundreds of episodes and i don't think there's a bad episode of breaking bad maybe like one or two where it's a little slower yeah but yeah I think every single episode especially past season one was like off the charts mm -hmm. yeah so, and it was like to the point where like uh in new mexico and albuquerque the uh i think the governor of the state literally made two statues for the two main characters that is insane yeah <laughs> And like, even though that got pushed back, like it was um, an achievement and like a great honor for someone who can help make a great series like that. I think I think another thing that goes under the radar is like great directors always for movies always get the recognition. Like Scorsese, Tarantino, these guys always get their their recognition. The guy who made Breaking Bad, I I don't even know his name right now. He made Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. We're talking about like two of the best shows exactly. in fifteen years. <laughs> but no, two of the best shows ever. But definitely the last 15 years. Hey, are you looking him up? Yeah, yeah, I was looking him up. I mean, the fact that we don't know his name as easily as we know, like Christopher Nolan. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah, Christopher Nolan. Uh, like, also for, like, directors and all that for, like, movies and all that, like Wes Anderson. Yeah, yeah. Vance Gilligan. Yeah, Vance that's Gilligan. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. I see it every episode. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's but, like, wait, really? That's that's the name? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. That is, like, new information for me. I just found that out. Yeah. I. Which is ridiculous to me, but... I mean, me too. I didn't even know the name. I think writers should be given more recognition for yeah. making things. Like Especially that. Like, quality writers. Yeah. Yeah. And not even just TV shows, like 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 movies that may end up being a trilogy. George Lucas. I oh, I mean, yeah, everyone knows, yeah. Everyone knows Everybody knows, knows George Lucas, yeah. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of it. other ones. Um, well, a lot of like trilogy for movies are based off books, like Lord of the Rings. Hunger Harry Games? Potter, Hunger Games, yeah. It, it still is an art to take a book and put it, like, you know, put it on screen, make dialogue like that, but I don't know. I think it's way more impressive to make six seasons of a, or five seasons, however many it is, of a TV show that are every single season is quality, quality, quality. Rather than, like, a two-hour movie. Yeah, but the best of the, the thing is that, okay, let's take a two-hour movie. I would much rather watch the two hours because it's two hours yeah um, <laughs> but i don't know that's just my opinion on it yeah, yeah. What, are, what are your thoughts on do you think it's hard to make like a um series like a like a mini series do you think would that fall under tv shows or would that fall under movies because for me band of brothers i consider that i don't know i don't i kind of consider it like a really long movie even though that's like split episodes yeah. but it's like back to back to back and i feel like every single episode is in my opinion perfect because i'm a history buff i love anything history like world war ii like that and I, the things those like soldiers went through in world war ii and how they're represented how they're portrayed how it's written how they acted out those characters like i everything was perfect about that i i consider that a movie i don't know if you're if you're putting i think it's six episodes maybe I think seven it, i think it's six like or ten. Oh, oh, yeah, ten. i think it might it might be ten i'm not sure but like um there's so many other ones out there that are like five six episodes to me, that's like, you could put that as a trilogy if you do one hour, one hour, one mm. That's six hours trilogy. Yeah, like, doesn't like Game of Thrones do something similar? I don't, I don't, I don't watch uh, Game of Thrones, but. You mean like how like, uh, it's like a continuation through the season? Yeah, exactly. I, th I think The Wire was the very first show at the, out of all the popular ones that like, one season was one long movie pretty much. Mm -hmm. Which, um, which I mean, it's an impressive thing to do for sure. Yeah. I think it's really hard to do. But at the same time, so if you're going to make a 10-hour movie versus a two-hour movie, it might be harder to do two hours because you have to cram everything into two hours. Definitely. Yeah, yeah but uh, like what I said earlier about like the whole industry of uh, media and all that and entertainment, what do you guys think about it? I don't know. I think it's in a crossroads right now between AI messing everything up like that. Yeah. And then, like, <laughs> people don't want to agree, and then people who are greedy, like, Disney, money greedy, and like don't want to money, money, and want to be more diverse, but also want to cut corners and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think it's in a it's a it's in a crossroads right now, of where it could be when it's like in its golden age, or it could just turn 
awful. <laughs> exactly. What I, do you think? I, I think that I think that the entertainment industry is something that will always be messy, but we just don't pay attention to the mess thirty years later. So right now we're in like a potential messy time. Yeah, I think that if the people who are in charge clean things up, you know, they they let the actors get paid, they do all these things, we could be in a very good spot. We have some great shows, great movies coming out, but we have this whole distraction mess that comes with it. Yeah. I yeah. Agree. But I think overall we have really good points about that. I think we all understand that we need to change things and overall just hope that the entertainment industry can do better yeah especially yeah. with like corporate uh, it companies. just it just takes the recognition of the viewers to understand what's happening and i feel like that that's like the first step into making sure everything's like power checked I yeah guess. yeah i mean the th the problem with viewers is people are what they're losing their attention span mm -hmm. oh yeah like three sucks. seconds yeah but you can never teach people how to watch something good you know what i mean you just have to put it out there and hope but you can advertise you have you have ways of doing it but we just gotta hope that people catch on to quality pretty much yeah yeah all right well like, yeah i think that's just the one thing we gotta hope for but overall um we hope that you enjoyed this and what we talked about and hopefully we can share the exact same opinions as you um yeah that's pretty much the end of this we hope you enjoyed and we hope you have a good night